Today we, we, are, we are going to talk about COVID recoveries. Um, as I'm talking to you now, Ghana, the active cases, as I'm talking to you now, is 7,866. 7,866. And new cases, as I'm talking to you now, is 702 new cases. And the total death is 561. 561. I'm not interested in the recoveries or discharge. I'm interested in what I just told you. It should tell us that the COVID thing is real. Today, I'm joined by a beautiful lady from all the way from U.S. and a gentleman will come and join me soon, but um, all the way from U.S. joining us through um, via Zoom. Um, if my lady is ready, um, good evening from Ghana. Good evening or good afternoon from my way. <laughs> all right, and, and how are we doing? I'm doing well, and how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Just that a little bit scared about, about COVID, you know, because that is the talk mm -hmm. of the day. Um, I, my, my, my viewers want to know who I'm talking to. I just want you to um, briefly introduce yourself for them to know who today is, has been my guest on this program. Um, so my name is Abigail Yaboa. Um, I was actually born in Ghana, lived there about eight years before, <coughs> sorry. I lived there about eight years before we moved to um, the States and I've been living here ever since. Um, I currently am in school trying to get my master's and I work as an accountant um, for the Allegheny West Conference here in Ohio. Um, I would say I'm more of a shy type, but once, you know, we start talking on one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> I do open up and start, you know, talking up a bit. But yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right. So, um, viewers, that is Abig uh, Abigail. Um, if you don't get the name right, she's Abigail. Abigail, not kind of sound, Abigail. And today <laughs> she's going to, she's going to um, um, talk to us about how she was able to um, get through this COVID thing and the system that w was put in place um, for her to go through it successfully. Abigail, um, we know COVID is a virus that um, has come, it started way back um, December in this town in China, as we all know. But Abigail, um, if I may ask you, to you, what is COVID? COVID is a disease not only that affects you physically, um, but it affects you emotionally, whether you had it or you know someone that got it, because in my case, I had it and I also knew people close to me that had it. And it's actually a very scary process that you go through because every day you don't know how um, is going to progress, how worse it's going to get. And it's just a daunting thing that stays on you and you just pray that, you know, eventually goes away um, so that, you know, you can get back to your full health eventually. All right. Um, so how, how did you know that you have contracted COVID? How did you know? <laughs> um, actually, so technically, I think I had it about three days before I realized that I had COVID. Um, so about the 30th of November last year, I started getting a congested nose. Um, the weird thing is I never sneezed. I didn't cough. It was just my nose was really, really congested. But I took it as all signs of just, oh, it's a common cold. <laughs> it wasn't until I think three days later, because even after the congested nose, my temperature was normal. So every day I would go to work, I would check my temperature and I was like, okay, it's normal, so it's not COVID. And I would go in on day four. Um, I was actually inhaling steam before I would go to work. And I did the first round and then I put water on again. And then I did, I was about to do the second round and I put some vapor rub in the water to help me inhale and I couldn't smell anything. It so, was so uh, gone like Ab that. Ab Ab Abigail, wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait. I want, I want my viewers to um, get get what we are saying. So, after mm -hmm. three days, you realize that s s things are changing in your system, right? Yes. And the first yes, thing, I the first thing that um, 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 you you probably saw or started changing was the common cold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. Then the sense of smell so, came in. 
Yeah, so usually okay. I know for a cold when it starts for me, I get I start getting a sore throat. And that's kind of how it started. And then I got the congested nose. Um, and this was not just your regular stuffy nose. It was so congested that even inhaling steam was not clearing uh, my sinuses up. It was just heavily congested. Um, and that's when I realized, I was like, this is not normal. This is not my usual common cold that I would get. And then I didn't sneeze whatsoever in those three days. I was not coughing either. So I was like, if this is a cold, I should be sneezing and coughing by now. Um, so the first sign that gave it away for me was when I actually lost my sense of smell. And the sen loss of sense of smell happened like that. It was not like a gradual, oh, it's going away slowly. It was one minute I could smell, the next minute it was gone. And wait, Abigail, I wait, wait, I, I, Abigail, I... What, from what, what, what you are telling us, probably somebody somewhere is going mm -hmm. through um, feeling the same way, but um, the mind is not telling him or her that probably it's this COVID thing. At mm -hmm. the point in time, you, 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 can, you can smell something at the point in time, you just go away. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Yes. So that's what made uh, COVID so special, where maybe if it's a cold, mm -hmm. it's going to be a gradual loss of sense of smell, mm -hmm. maybe. But with COVID, um, it was here one minute, gone the next. So mm -hmm. I did that first round of inhaling steam with vapor rub. I could smell it. And then when I started the second round, it was just gone. And I couldn't smell anything. But again, it didn't really hit me that, oh, you've lost your sense of smell. I just deduced. I was like, oh, it's probably the vapor rub is not strong enough. And that's why I can't smell it. So it wasn't until that evening, actually, I was going to work and I sprayed some perfume on me. Mm -hmm. And I think I did about six or seven rounds of perfume. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I was like, I should smell this perfume by now. And I couldn't smell it. And that's when I started to panic. And I was like, no, I was like, God, please. I hope I don't have COVID because I was actually supposed to travel to Ghana in two days. Um, so, I was like, I, it can't be COVID because if I have COVID, I can't go to Ghana. And that's when I became in, in denial, basically. I didn't want to believe that I had COVID, but all science was telling me that it was COVID. So, oh, oh, so uh, Abigail, I'm, 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 you see, all these signs, probably somebody had, had experienced it bef before or probably is still experiencing these signs you, you are saying, but um, uh, it's not, uh, the person it, it probably is not thinking that it is, it is covered. As you are saying that, God, I don't want it to be covered. Um, but mm -hmm. when, when you realize it was covered finally, what mm -hmm. happened? Um, honestly, actually, I still was in denial until I got the test results. Seriously? Because, <laughs> so I, I stayed by myself. So I was supposed to take my flight um, back at where my parents live. So I packed up my things. I was still being hopeful that my test results was going to come up negative and then I would <laughs> still get to travel. The difficult thing that day was actually finding a place to test because at that time in the United States, COVID cases were up so much that um, urgent cares and hospitals were not allowing walk-ins anymore. So you had to schedule an appointment. So it was like time sensitive of where I needed to get a COVID test within 72 hours to travel to Ghana, but I wasn't finding any place to do the COVID test. So I spent all of Friday kind of driving around my city and then I couldn't find a place. And then one of my friends told me, it was like, you know, come to Cincinnati, go to the urgent care that I went and then tell them that you have COVID symptoms um, and they should take you in. So. I, I went, I drove there and then, you know, they took me in and then I did the COVID test, which was very uncomfortable, but you had to do it. <laughs> and <laughs> I went home to my parents' house and I remember I went home and I told my mom and I was like, I can't smell anymore after the congested nose. And I remember that moment, my mom was like, oh my goodness. Uh, she told my sister, she was like, go get my nose mask. You know, let me cover Whoa. myself. <laughs> and I was like, my own family. <laughs> All right, Abigail, <laughs> Abigail, I'll, Abigail I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, um, mm -hmm. Abigail now is telling us um, she has now um, um, told the family about, about what she's going through. And now the family, it's, it's, 
giving her space. A family that welcomes her, a family that um, talk to her, sit with her, now are giving her space now because of the symptoms that she has started exhibiting. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Abigail, now you've you've broken the news to um, your, your 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 mom. Your mom is shying away from you, putting on no smacks. From there, what happened? Um, from there, I was automatically quarantined. So my mom had my sister remove all her stuff from the bathroom that we shared, and then she told me she was like, you know, the bedroom and the bathroom are the two places I can go if I need anything. I just need to let them know, and they will bring it to me. But I shouldn't come downstairs um, anymore. And then, you know, she kind of disinfected everything. Um, so the next day, which was Saturday, um, I was waiting for my results. And Saturday was when I lost my uh, taste also. So sense of smell was gone, and then I couldn't taste anything anymore. And that's when, it, you know, for me, it confirmed for me, I was like, definitely I have COVID. But again, we're still being optimistic that I really wanted to come to Ghana. So I was like, no, until I get the results, I, I don't want to believe that I have COVID. Um, but I was still quarantining. Um, I didn't step foot outside after that. And then Saturday evening, I remember I called the urgent care and then I was like, is my test results in? And the guy was like, yes, it's in. You're positive. Mm. And my whole world shattered. I, I got sad immediately. Like, I was lying in bed for a straight hour, didn't talk to anybody. And it was kind of like that for the next three days. I didn't even want to hear the word Ghana because it just made me depressed for the fact that I had to cancel my trip call my auntie um, in Ghana and let her know like, oh yeah, I'm not coming anymore. All the people who had given me their stuff to take to Ghana, it was kind of like, now I'm embarrassed to actually tell them that I had COVID. Um, and that whole ordeal, I think it took a toll on me, but apart from like the sense of smell, the um, taste and the congested nose, um, as Robert was also saying that there was that weakness originally that first couple of days also, but I just thought that it was me working a lot and that's why I was weak. I never tied it to the fact that, oh, it might be a COVID symptom. And I lost my sense of smell for about five to six days where I couldn't taste anything. I couldn't smell anything. Um, and eating was really difficult, but how I was able to eat is I would just think of I would try to remember what the food used to taste like, and that's how I would be able to eat. My temperature um, still stayed normal, so if you looked at me, you wouldn't think that I had COVID. Oh, okay, so I you, you didn't have a, 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 a high temperature? No. Oh, okay. Hmm. So I never got a fever. Um, my temperature was always normal. So going off a of temperature, you would not think that I had you know, COVID. Um, and unless I told you that I couldn't smell or taste anything, again, you wouldn't know. And even though I had the congested nose, my voice didn't change for, you to, for it to sound like, oh, she has a cold or some sort. So again, I was kind of like, though I had the symptoms, I could walk around and you would never know that I have COVID that whole time. And wow. I think my symptoms cleared about the sense of smell and taste came back about seven days later, I had my congested nose for about three weeks before it actually cleared. And then the weakness actually continued out for that whole month. So um, usually here, when you get tested for COVID, they just um, tell you to quarantine for 14 days and then you just do home remedies. They don't give you any medication or any sort of thing like that. So. I just had to do home remedies like that wasap drink with the pineapple ginger and all that. I was drinking that the sobo, twice. The sobolo thing, right? Yeah, that sobolo okay. thing. I was drinking that twice daily. Um, I was inhaling steam for about an hour to the point that, you know, the steam, the hot steam actually burned my skin. But I wanted to be clear of COVID. What, psychologically, how did you feel when you, you realized that um, 
you've contracted COVID and you need to be isolated for these few days now. Things are changing. What was the feeling emotionally and psychologically? Um, emotionally, I was sad because I had been kind of working the whole year towards my vacation in Ghana. And I had put it before the Lord. And I was like, Lord, if it's your role for me to go to Ghana, like, you know, your girl has been working, let me go. <laughs> and the fact that it came out as positive and that moment I got depressed. Um, I don't want to talk to anyone. So um, a lot of people who texted me in those moments, I didn't even know how to talk to them. Um, my parents, most of the time, you know, they came in and they would bring me stuff, but I wasn't talking to anybody because I was I isolated. So the only time my parents would come in was to give me my medication or my food. And that was about it. So it took an emotional toll on me. It's good that, you know, Robert actually was more optimistic because in that moment, I was actually upset with God. Um, I was like, why would he let something like this happen to me? And my mom would say, oh, you know, all things work together. And I was like, that's great, all but I don't want to hear that in that moment. <laughs> like, if it really all worked together, God would allow me to go to Ghana. So in those two weeks that I had to, you know, be quarantined, um, there was a side of me that was upset with God. Even when I would do devotions, I was doing it because I know it was the right thing to do. But deep within my heart, I didn't want to talk to God at that moment because I was like, he filled me. God I filled you. For one thing. Yeah, and God filled me. You, 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 you <laughs> were not, you're not thinking like, of dying. You were not thinking of... You're not thinking of dying. You're not thinking of anything. You're thinking of coming to Ghana. So the fact that you didn't come to Ghana, God has filled you. Yes. <laughs> but a lot of people, a lot of people, I think a lot of people went through this and they didn't um, come back to life again, right? Mm -hmm. So psychologically, you true. were not thinking about what will happen to you. You were thinking about um, you not being able to come to Ghana. Yeah, uh, in that moment, it's, it sounds very selfish now, but <laughs> in that moment, I was not thinking about like, oh yeah, there are people who have died. There are people who are close to me that actually had it worse that had to be taken to the hospital. Um, and I think for me, because I feel like my symptoms wasn't super severe, I didn't see the seriousness of me contracting COVID in that moment. And um, it wasn't until I think I was almost out of quarantine actually that um, I realized that if I would have actually been able to come to Ghana because I actually moved my trip two days um, behind. So I was supposed to come December 1st. And I realized if I would have came to Ghana, what would have happened was automatically at the airport, they would have quarantined me right there. I would have not been able to see my family. And the recovery process that I would have gotten where compared to how my parents treated me and how maybe I would have gotten in Ghana just being by myself, it would have not been the same. And I probably would have not recovered as quickly um, as I did with my parents. And I think my symptoms was all gone within two weeks. However, I kept testing positive for another three weeks. Oh. So every time I would go to go get tested, because again, I was still trying to come to Ghana. So every week I would go get no, tested. No, no, no problem, you'll come to Ghana, you'll come, you'll come. You'll come, <laughs> no it was, problem. It um, was positive, yeah. Abby, um, with, with now you are, you've recovered or you are in recovery. How many, how many <laughs> days did you self-isolated and how did you know that you are now um, COVID free? All right, so I actually self-isolated for about a month um, because even though my symptoms cleared up, every time I would get tested, I was so positive. So I wasn't sure that if I could, you know, still give it to someone um, luckily, everyone who I exposed, I think I exposed about five people before I found out I was um, positive and all of them tested negative. None of my family ever That's got okay. it. Um, but I as isolated for about a month um, until I got the all clear from the doctor that I was negative. I never left my house. It was actually towards the end. Um, I actually started having some chest pains where breathing became a little difficult for me. So every so often where I would breathe around my chest area, I would feel the sharp pain. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is bad. You know, I thought 
this is where I would have to go to the hospital, um, put on a ventilator and whatnot. Um, but luckily, I think my last visit, when I went to the urgent care again, the doctor checked me and he was like, I'm okay. It's just, you know, the COVID clearing my body. And that's why it's, uh, I'm feeling those symptoms, but it should be gone. And then I got the negative um, result. I think a little bit after Christmas is when I found out that I was negative. And that's when I finally came out of my room, went downstairs and actually okay. saw my family. Okay. And then yeah. um, it took me a while, weakness wise, mm. I wasn't able to do the same stuff as I was able to do. I got very uh, winded easily. So just even climbing up the stairs, I would go and just feel like I would just run a mile. And that took me about a good month after that to actually fully feel like myself again. All right, all right. After so after how many, how many months now? What, after a month, right? Yeah, after a all month. All right, what would be your message for my viewers when it comes to COVID? COVID is very real. Just because uh, maybe it didn't hit me as hard doesn't mean that's not going to hit you as hard. Um, it hits everybody differently. I might be asymptomatic, but you know, you might get it where you will be placed on the ventilator. And we have to take it seriously. Just because we're seeing these numbers or people are saying it's a joke, trust me, it's not a joke until you get it. Okay. Uh, because in those last moments leading up to me getting COVID, I was very careful not to go out to places, washing my hands thoroughly, doing all the things that I should, I was supposed to do to prevent COVID and I still got it. So don't think that, oh, because you're doing, you know, this, this and that, or just because I'm healthy, I'm not going to get COVID. It's going to come for you if you're not, you know, careful. And when you do get it, take it seriously. Um, even if you're asymptomatic, don't think that because I'm not showing any symptoms. As now I was saying, you can't give it to someone else. It's very serious. And someone else could get it where they will be placed on a ventilator. And that's why I decided to just self-isolate till the doctor gave me the all clear that I was okay. Thank you so, so much. So that is my message for people. God bless you so much.